Do you find it hard to expand your network of people? Whether it's in the business arena or as a public speaker, is it tough to get to know those people that you need to get to know next to go to the next level? Well, today, we're going to talk about networking, so stick around. Hey, it's a trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to another Leaders and Communicators, where I'm sharing my 25 years of broadcasting, leadership, and communication. I've been communicating and leading in a lot of different arenas, and I want to help you improve your areas so that you can defy the odds and take your career, your mission, to the next level. Networking is one of the biggest areas that we need to invest in. No matter if you're a big company or a small company, we are networking all the time. And I'm not talking about just mass email networking. I'm talking about networking as a lifestyle. You need to be networking all the time. Some of it's high octane and some of it's casual conversation. And today we're going to talk a little bit about all those areas and more. So let's start off with the easy one. Networking. You start with who you know. Start out with your family and your friends. This can be as easy as a backyard barbecue. This can be as easy as a sporting event with your kids. This can be as easy as going to church and talking with people. You'd be amazing. How many people do not know what you're up to, what you're passionate about, what you're dreaming to achieve, or what's your next goal? What's your next incentive? And most people are interested if you fill them in. So step one, keep it simple. Build your networking with people you know. Don't go way outside of your realm of influence. Start with where you know. Build confidence, get practice, and then go from there. Now, number two on my top five list is going to be, especially if you're a speaker or you're a leadership expert, if you have a gig, if you have a business opportunity, always network through the event. If you're a speaker like I am, you often have an opportunity somewhere to say, oh, I'd like to talk to you afterwards. If you have questions, I would love to get feedback from you. You can do it face-to-face -face or have a questionnaire available to gather information. And the trick about this is you must follow up within 24 to 48 hours after the event. Don't let it be a month and try to follow up. You have been lost in the shuffle. You have been forgot about but you have just presented a dynamite presentation. You now own the executive boardroom. The platform is yours. Open up a way to network right in that moment. If you have a speaking opportunity, make sure you have a table afterwards to take questions, sign books, give away the things you want to give away, and network with people. Have a fishbowl, get business cards, and make another outreach out of that. Most gigs, most next career opportunities, come off of the one you just got. So network through the current event. Number three is a pretty obvious one. Everyone's talking about social media, the power of social media. First of all, do not do blanket social media and just spam it out to everybody. Let me tell you, it will hit the trash can as soon as you go click. It's not going to be effective. It's a waste of money and time and energy. However, social media, for example, with LinkedIn, is a great tool. Here's how I use LinkedIn, for example. Now with LinkedIn, they have a little connect and they have the message. Connect gives you less character to talk about yourself. Be intentional. Tell them who you are, tell them why you want to connect, and maybe you want to do a coffee with them. Just leave it at that. If they connect with you then, the message allows you to give a deeper, longer commercial about yourself. Here's what I'm passionate about. Here's what I would like to follow up with you. Could you do a coffee with me? And then be sure to include some sort of JPEG, some sort of graphic, or a link to a website to get them off LinkedIn and into your real world to promote yourself. But be aware, connect and message have two different opportunities. If you get a connect, you must follow up the deeper message. Have templates ready, step one, step two, and keep it rolling and keep the conversation going. Also, invest in getting those little chat rooms. Get into a group 
and get in there and type and participate with the conversations. Make yourself known and you will network with people and they will also request you and you can build from there. Fourth, business after hours. It's an old strategy. People tend to forget about it more and more, but I still believe in face-to-face -face business after hours. Business after hours is often a casual time. You can have everyone from the plumber to a political campaign person. You can have your next door neighbor to someone you've never ever seen starting a brand new business and they could use your expertise. Slap on a name tag, invest in a couple hours, grab a drink, go shake a hand and hand out business cards. Oh, and when you're doing this, don't just talk about yourself. Ask questions. Get to know them. What are they about? What is their mission? Join in on them and what they're about, and they will show more interest in you than what you're about. It's worth the time. Do not forget about this old school, but very important, business after hours, especially if you're in a new city like I am. Fifth and final is targeted marketing. So many people are just spamming out things to everybody, as I mentioned earlier. It doesn't work. It's a waste of money. Just because you can get it out to 300,000 people or 200,000 people doesn't mean it's going to be effective. Use your time, your efforts, and your resources wisely. So target who you're after. For me, currently I'm trying to talk about my transplanted talk, Life Lessons of a Transplant Recipient. So here in Denver, being new, I am targeting in Denver transplant clinics, transplant doctors, transplant care nurses, resource centers that help people that financially need help for transplants. I am targeting a niche that fits my talk and letting them know how I can serve them and help them. I have one just for schools. I'm targeting schools about my bully talk and maybe it could work for the universities or schools. Target yourself, place yourself in a category where you stand out with something valuable, unique for them, and then go after it. You can do it in a lot of different ways, but be targeted. Don't just do the blanket shot. So, how good are you at lifestyle networking? Is there something you carve out and then you leave it alone? Or do you network naturally, constantly, fluidly as a part of who you are? Let me hear your thoughts on networking. If you have other tips, any other ideas that help you, what unlock that next level for you with networking? I would love to hear a comment down below. And again, give me your highs, give me your lows, give me your positives and critical statements on this, and hit the bell, subscribe, so you never miss another leaders and communicators. Until next time, for my new home in Denver, Colorado, I'm the Trigger Rich Bond Trigger. God bless. Have a great week.